Really quick, if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Tyranid Prime, make sure you check that episode out some point so you can find out why I said, Oh no! When I saw that card. But don't leave just yet because on this episode, we've got a card that is 12 mana. That's right, you heard me right. 12 mana. That's a lot of mana. And speaking of a lot, well, Eddie does a lot for this channel, especially during spoiler season. So thank you, Eddie. But also, I'll blame Eddie in the description below. Uh, in the description below. Goodness, I just made a mistake right there. In the comments below, <laughs> blame Eddie. I guess I could blame him in the description as well. But yeah, blame Eddie in the comments below because it's always Eddie's fault, not mine, whenever I make mistakes. Now, with all that said, let's jump into it. So, the card on this episode is Hierophant Bio Titan, a 12 12 Tyranid that costs 10 green green. That's right, 12 mana in total. So, yeah, um, that's a ton. Uh, but luckily for us, we have a way to cast it for cheaper than that. In fact, much, much cheaper for the right deck because it's got Frenzied Metabolism. As this will cost to cast this spell, you may remove any number of plus one counters from among creatures you control. This spell costs two less to cast for each counter removed this way. Or in other words, yeah, uh, remove five counters. This only costs two mana to cast. That's right. Green, green for a 12-12. Oh, and did I mention it also has Vigilance, Reach, and Ward 2. So this is a... Well, a creature you can just keep swinging out with, it can block your opponent's flyers, and good luck for them getting through with any flyers with this in play. And Ward 2, again, is a fantastic way to protect it. On top of that, it can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, so yeah, no chump blocking this. Now, obviously, one other keyword that I would have liked to see on this is Trample. That being said, of course, there are plenty of decks out there that have ways to give this Trample, and we'll talk about a commander specifically here in a bit. That, yeah, just says, hey, 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 buddy, get over here. Here's some trample. Have fun. Nevertheless, yeah, this is a very spicy card. One that obviously isn't for every single kind of, kind of deck out there, obviously. You know, if you don't have plus one encounters in your deck, uh, 12 mana is a ton to cast something like this. So, yeah, y you need to ensure that you've got some counter synergies to ensure that you can cast this very cheaply. Or, or, and we'll talk about a commander specifically here in a bit, that really doesn't even need those counter synergies to actually make this work. But of course, with decks that can utilize this and can get it out, there are a lot of things that you can take advantage of with this card. I mean, first up, there are some things out there that care about, you know, mana value, and this has a massive mana value, and the bigger the better when it comes to those kinds of things. And the same can be said for its power. Again, it is a 12-12, and of course, there are cards out there that care about power, and you can have some massive effects thanks to this. I mean, just think about, you know, a deck that might also have red that can include this and cares about counters. Uh, yeah, you get this in a play with maybe a War Storm Surge in play, paying something for 12. Uh, have fun <laughs> with that. So yeah, I mean, typically I would probably just want to ping someone's face for 12. But yeah, you can basically take out any creature on the board with that. But first, let's actually just jump into somewhat similar cards to this one. First, I mean, okay, the original, you know, massive converted mana cost uh, creature out there. And actually, I think this is actually the largest mana value out of any card in Magic's history. I, I, okay, yeah, non-silver border. I'm sure there's silver border. That's more than this. But yeah, Draco at 16 mana. I don't think anything else has gotten there yet. But yeah, 12 is a ton. 16, even more. And this was kind of, you know, the blueprint, it seems like, you know, for the original, you know, massive creature that just has an absurd mana value, uh, but you're never actually going to cast it for that amount. Because, yeah, Draco costs, you know, two less to cast for each basic land you control, so basically, you know, if you got all five, you know, basic lands in play, cool. Uh, you pay six for this 9-9 Flying Dragon, and then you don't have to pay anything during upkeep or you sacrifice it. But yeah, I mean, Draco sees play in very specific decks because, well, the deck really has to care about, you know, mana value or, you know, I, I mean, I guess a five color deck that really wants to get this, you know, 9-9 nine -nine flyer out can. Next up, though, a more recent example that we have seen is Shadow of Mortality, a 7-7 avatar for 13 black black, so 15 mana in total. 
but if your life total is less than your starting life total this spell costs x less cast works is the difference so yeah in commander basically you know if you're at what 27 or less life this is just two mana for a 7 7 so not bad obviously you know not when you get into play not nearly as impactful as you know a 12 12 vigilance you know reach ward that can't be blocked by you know power or creatures power two or less so yeah not as impactful once actually in play might be easier to get out though for you know certain decks but even more recently than this one we did see earthquake dragon a 10 10 elemental dragon for 14 a green again so 15 mana cost x less to cast rexy told mana value of dragons you control flying trample pay two to green sacrifice a land bring it back from grave with your hand so yeah this one is you know basically hey are you playing a dragon tribal deck cool this can probably fit right in if not you're probably not going to utilize it again unless you really care about you know that high mana value and there are definitely decks out there that do now when it comes to caring about things again there are decks out there that do have cards in it, like rich cards expertise which cares about power and again this brand new card has 12 power which is massive so cast rich cards expertise draw 12 cards again you're drawing cards you the greatest power when creatures you control it's probably going to be that one <laughs> you may cast spell with mana value five or less for your hand that paying its mana cost so for just six mana draw 12 yeah sign me up for that and you if you also you know have me in blue and again you are utilizing you know a bunch of high converted mana cost you know cards in your deck a card like rush of knowledge can be great as well draw cards equal to the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control again this one you know, applies to obviously less decks out there for the most part but definitely could apply to a card like this now unfortunately you know this brand new card is not in the color identity of hidden suku devouring chaos who definitely cares about high converted mana cost spells pay two and a red tap exile top card of your library play that card this turn you exile a non card this way hidden suku deals damage to the exile cards may value 20 target so yes if you happen to have a deck maybe that utilizes a card like hidden suku in it and you have you know a bunch of other you know massive cards in the deck sure add in another 12 mana card and you know have ways to get that on top and then utilize this but yeah unfortunately hitetsuku does not include it in its color identity that being said there are plenty of commanders out there that definitely do and would like to you know take a look at this card The first one actually came to my mind is actually another commander from uh, this I, I almost said set right there from this uh these commander precons there you go <laughs> we got there old one eye a six six tyranny with trample gives other creatures you control trample also makes a five five when it comes into play does a lot of things but basically yeah this commander gives your other creatures trample and you know with your 12 12 vigilant reach you know ward two can't be blocked by you know tiny creatures great but throwing trample on top of that makes it a much much bigger threat now that being said if you are building an old one eye deck if you don't have any you know plus plus one counter synergies in it yeah that's probably not gonna work out very well for you because it costs 12 mana then to get out but that being said again old one eye can definitely benefit from creatures that have plus plus one counter synergies like you know a stag beetle I think that's the one that when it comes into play it gets a lot of counters on it or you know like forgotten ancient which can grow a ton of counters throughout the game or like primeval protector yeah there's plenty of massive creatures that old one eye would love to give trample to and, and yeah this 12 12 is just another one of them and actually yeah if you haven't seen my episode on old one eye make sure you check that one out at some point not yet don't leave just yet but you know later check it out later thank you next up a commander that immediately came to my mind that can probably get this thing out way too quickly is hamza guardian Varashin. It's a 5 5 Elfin Warrior that costs 4 green white, but it's going to cost 1 less cast for each creature control a plus 1 counter on it, and creature spells you cast cost 1 less cast for each creature control a plus 1 counter on it. So this cares about creatures with counters on them, and it gives cost reduction to your creatures based on, you know, your counters. So you're already going to get cost reduction for your Bio Titan, and yeah, just by removing a couple of counters here and there, you can pay for the rest essentially. And yeah, now you're just paying again 2 mana for a massive creature. That can be a huge threat throughout the game and of course with you know more and more counter synergies in the deck you can actually make it an even bigger threat as well moving on how about a gruel commander with shishiro the shattered blade a 4-4 that says whenever an aura equipment enters battlefield under control create a 2-2 red spirit creature token with menace and on top of that begin your end step with a plus one counter at each modified creature you control so get a bunch of ores and equipment into play make a lot of spirits with menace and yeah i mean again by modifying your creatures by either you know giving them an aura and equipment attached to them or you know just actually you know spreading out a bunch of plus one one counters which is very very easy you can then you know ensure that you are hitting that end step trigger to get even more counters on them and uh obviously then you can very easily 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 cast this new card for just two mana 
Which, of course, then you can just equip with something, you know, that gives it, you know, trample or, you know, lifelink or, you know, trample and lifelink. Like, you know, locks of Warhammer. Have fun with that. Or maybe even Infect, like Grafted Exoskeleton. Yeah, gross. So, yeah, I think that card has a lot of potential in this deck. But, of course, Bio Titan can also see play in another mono green deck like Kodama of the West Tree. I mean, it's pretty fantastic in this one. A 3 3 with Reach that says modify creatures you control have trample. And again, equipment auras and, you know, counters are modifications. On top of that, whenever a modified creature control deals counter to a player, search library for a base land card, put on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. So this deck can actually ramp very quickly. And again, one of the easiest ways to modify all your creatures is basically to have, you know, an effect that just gets a single counter on all of them. Or, you know, more, more and more counters throughout the game. There's plenty of ways to do that. I mean, that lieutenant, the green lieutenant, the rhino, I can't remember what it's called. Loyal guardian, had to look it up. But yeah, I mean, getting counters on your creatures can be quite easy for a green deck to do. So just do that. Your creatures have trample you can then easily cast, you know, your 12-12, your which you can then also, you know, easily modify in a deck like this. It then just has Trample just by getting a counter on it. And, and yeah, I mean, have fun smacking your opponents with that massive creature. And then also ramping when you do so. Next up, one spicy commander that can really utilize this card is Grumgully the Generous. It says each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield initial plus one counter on it. So yeah, if you've got a deck that doesn't have any humans in it, uh, every single one of your creatures comes into play with an extra counter on it. So very, very easy for you to get five counters, you know, so you can easily get your massive Bio Titan into play for just two mana. And of course, your Bio Titan itself is not a human either. So here's a counter. Have fun. Now you've got a 13-13. Vigilance, Reach, you know, Ward 2. Can't be blocked by tiny creatures. Have fun. I mean, even a commander that absolutely loves low-to-the-ground creatures like Torrent's Fist the Angels is going to want to consider this card. Torrent's is a 2-2 with training, and it says whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one, green and white human soldier creature token with training, and again, training means whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one counter on this creature. So again, typically Torrent's loves having, you know, low-to-the-ground creatures that you can cast quite quickly so you can get, you know, those humans out with training, and then you can just be aggressive, swing out, and then get counters on those creatures, have them hit for more. And of course, with the Bio Titan, you can utilize those counters for, you know, it to essentially be, again, a low-to-the-ground creature. One that just costs you two mana to cast again for a 12-12. And it comes into play with a little buddy. Again, a little soldier joins it that has training. So, yeah, again, even though it inherently isn't a low-to-the-ground creature, it costs 12 mana, it can be. It can cost as little as two. So, yeah, Torrens, or should I say maybe the right Torrens builds, might want to take a look at that. Moving on, a commander that itself cares about counters, but might not have any creatures that really care about counters in the deck outside of it, and actually really doesn't need all that much help uh, with those counters. Anyways, Animar, Soul of Elements, a 1-1, one, one, pro white, pro black. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one counter on Animar, Soul of Elements. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each counter on Animar. So Animar is incredible at getting out creatures very, very, very quickly because, yeah, I mean, that cost reduction can be insane, especially with artifact creatures. But yeah, basically, just get a ton of counters on Animar, reduce the cost of your creature spells by a lot. I mean, eventually, you probably will get like 10 counters on Animar anyway, so you don't actually have to remove any counters from Animar to help you cast the Bio Titan. And of course, if you've got any other creatures, you know, that do enter with counters on them or whatnot or spread out counters that Animar is helping you cast, yeah, I mean, utilize those to get the Bio Titan out too. Regardless, another massive creature for Animar decks to consider. Now, one final commander that I do want to bring up that doesn't inherently, you know, work with plus plus one counters, but can definitely utilize them, Zeatora the Incinerator. A 6-6 six, six with flying, this is the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, Zeatora deals damage to that creature's power to any target and you create three treasure tokens. So, Zeatora does care about power, and yes, if you've got a counter build around this, you can utilize those, you know, counters to make your creatures bigger to help, you know, Zeatora hit harder when you fling those creatures at other players. So yeah, if you happen to utilize a good amount of counters in a Zeatora deck, yeah, the Bio Titan can definitely fit right in. I mean, who doesn't want to fling a 12-12 at someone's face? And also get, you know, three treasures. But now this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Hierophant Bio Titan. Yeah, this thing is massive, and yes, it is not for every single kind of deck out there. I mean, if you don't have any counter synergies in your decks, unless it's a very specific commander that, you know, can get it out in different ways or cares about it in a different way, yeah, I mean, it's not for every deck out there, but for, for decks that can get it out and get it out quite quickly, 
this thing can become a massive threat. I mean, again, just two mana for a 12-12, Vigilance Reach Ward 2, can't be blocked can't by, by, you know, tiny creatures. And obviously, you know, if you've got other ways, you know, to give it trample or, you know, flying or some other form of evasion, it can be an even bigger threat. So yeah, just a really interesting card. And yeah, make sure and look out for even more exciting spoilers and quick takes coming up on this channel. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.